Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This didn't have to happen. That statement can be said about many of the problems that we face in life and many of the situations that we find ourselves in. This didn't have to happen. A car, a, a, a car accident is a good example of something like that. A lot of car ac accidents are caused by somebody driving too fast or what we now call these days distracted, uh, distracted driving and they didn't have to happen. Um, floods, a lot of that happening this year. And sometimes that can be said about a flood. Not every time, but sometimes it applies. This didn't have to happen. Humans built something in the wrong place. Or humans didn't build a big enough levee, something like that. A lot of times when a flood happens, this didn't have to happen. It could have been prevented. Some of the health problems that we endure, not all of them, but some of them, this could have been prevented. It didn't have to happen. Uh, maybe a little more brushing and flossing would have prevented that cavity or worse. Relationships are damaged or they come to an end even. And sometimes the phrase applies, this didn't have to happen. Sometimes relationships get damaged or they come to an end because somebody said something foolish or somebody wouldn't apologize, or somebody wouldn't forgive, or something like that. This didn't have to happen. It can apply to a lot of situations that we face in life, a lot of problems that we face in life, but they happen because we live in a fallen world, and it's just the nature of our broken world. They happen uh, because other people sin, and we can see how they bring things on themselves, and they happen because of our own sin sometimes, too, when we bring things on ourselves. Looking at our uh, scripture readings for today, I think you can apply that phrase to each of those also. From our Old Testament reading in the uh, book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was an Old Testament prophet in the days uh, leading up to the Babylonian captivity, when the whole nation of Judah was taken captive and taken away and Jerusalem destroyed and the temple in Jerusalem destroyed, this didn't have to happen. One of the ways that you can, uh, uh, one of the ways that uh, God says that in the book of Ezekiel, I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord. And so all this struggle that God's Old Testament people went through, the destruction of their nation, the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple there, this didn't have to happen. When I look at our epistle reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, he writes there about God's Old Testament people who were overthrown in the wilderness, is the way he puts it. And he's talking about that 40 years of wandering after they left Egypt. And that too, you know, it didn't have to happen, but it's something that they kind of brought on themselves. If you remember your old, uh, that part of Old Testament history, uh, God led his people out of Egypt, he was ready to lead them into the promised land, but they were afraid to take the promised land, even though God told them that he would go with them and be bold and courageous and all those things. But they chose not to. They doubted God, and uh, God said, you're going to wander in the wilderness now for 40 years, and everybody age 20 and older will die there in the wilderness. And that's what Paul means when he says that they were overthrown in the wilderness. It didn't have to happen that way. Or looking at a gospel reading for today, Jesus mentions a couple of things that I think that phrase can be applied to. Uh, that confrontation between Pontius Pilate and those Galilean worshipers that ended in bloodshed, whatever that was all about, it probably didn't have to happen. There was a better way to solve that problem. Or the Tower of Siloam that fell and killed 18 people, that didn't have to happen. Uh, maybe that tower should have been built differently, or maybe, uh, maybe it needed to be inspected once in a while, something like that. This could have been prevented. Their deaths didn't have to happen. And then Jesus, he mentions those two things, you know, the, the, the Galileans killed by Pilate, the people killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. He mentions those two things that really didn't have to happen, and then he says, do you think that the people who died there were worse sinners than everybody else? And then he answers his own question, no, they were not. 
They're really not any different from the rest of humanity. They're really not any different than anybody else. And then here's his application of these two tragedies. Live a life of repentance so that you too don't suffer needlessly. Those tragic deaths didn't have to happen. Live a life of repentance so that you too don't have to suffer needlessly. Live a life of turning away from sin, repentance, so that you don't have to suffer needlessly. And Jesus even uses the word perish there. And I think uh, it's likely he's talking about perishing eternally. He calls people to repentance after mentioning those tragic accidents. And I think this is the idea. Live a life of repentance so that you don't have to perish eternally, needlessly. Eternal death is what Jesus is talking about. Eternal separation from God. Uh, and it doesn't have to happen because God is merciful and He is gracious and He is forgiving. In our Gospel reading for today, there is a call to repentance by Jesus, and it is, among other things, a call to receive mercy from God. And God is merciful. That's the good news. Remember again how uh, in the book of Ezekiel we read where God says, I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord. Nobody has to suffer eternity in hell because God is merciful and gracious and forgiving. The Apostle Paul writes that God wants all people to be saved. That's the way he says the same thing. God is merciful and gracious and forgiving. Or John the Baptist, you remember how when he sees Jesus, he says, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, emphasizing God's mercy and his kindness and his forgiveness. And when Jesus says in our Gospel reading for today, repent, he's encouraging us to look again to God's mercy and His kindness and His love and find forgiveness, forgiveness for eternity. Jesus, on the cross, did everything necessary for us and for our salvation and for the salvation of the whole world. And on the cross, that's what Jesus is doing. He's showing us God's mercy and he's paying the debt for our sins that we cannot pay. And he's paying the debt for the sins of the whole world. He is the atoning sacrifice, John writes later in his epistle, not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. And so, that includes the people in Ezekiel's day. That includes those people who were overthrown in the wilderness. That includes Pilate and the blood of the Galileans that he mixed with their sacrifices. That includes everyone who's ever seen the Tower of Siloam, who, who's ever touched it, whoever helped build it. All of those people, their sins covered by the blood of Christ. And the sacrifice of Jesus on the, Christ, uh, uh, the, sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, that is forgiveness for us too, when we foolishly cause things that didn't have to happen. In our Gospel reading for today, Jesus encourages a life of repentance. And it's a sensible thing for us to continue to do. I know that's what you do. That's why you're here. And Jesus is encouraging us to continue that life of repentance. Keep on trusting in Him for forgiveness today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, until you reach your eternal home in heaven. And also, it's encouragement uh, to, encur uh, to continue the evangelism programs of the church here in our community, in our nation, and all around the world. It's the sensible thing to do because God wants all people to be saved. We continue to look to God for word uh, and sacrament, for baptism, confession and absolution, the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, the proclamation of the gospel. Through these things, God delivers people from eternal death. Through these things, God delivers people from eternal separation from God. Through these things, through word and sacrament, He bestows grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And those things are yours freely today because of God's love for you and His care for you. And it's all right for you to look forward to heaven because that's, your, uh, that, that, that's a place where, because Jesus is preparing a place for you there. And some of the nice things about heaven, 
must be, or one of the nice things about heaven must be that that phrase, this didn't have to happen, I suspect that's unnecessary in heaven. I don't think that phrase is needed in heaven, this didn't have to happen. Because in heaven, we receive only blessings from God. Only blessings happen there in heaven as we for eternity enjoy the gift of God's life. That is your future because of your Savior's love and care for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.